Hey guys, it is Patrick. And before you dive into this intermediate accounting lesson, I wanted you to know that you can actually download the notes for this section and specifically this lesson that you're about to watch if you head to my website at www.patrickleemsa.com or you can head over to the description link that's below and I'll put that link to those notes below where you can find them, download them, and print them, and follow along as you watch this lesson. So go do that, and here is your intermediate accounting lesson. All right, in this lesson, we are talking about recognition concepts. What we're talking about is this idea of when do we recognize a transaction into the books of the financial statement. So, you know, there is this uh, timeline here where a transaction happens, and then we as accountants have to admit that transaction into the accounting program or the accounting books. At what time do we actually enter it in or do we enter it in in the first place? So that's what we're kind of talking about in this lesson. So let's take a look here at recognition concepts. So recognition and measurement are a very important aspect of making sure we book revenue and expenses in the right period at the right time. And the reason why that that is important is because there may be transactions that would seem to be in last year's books that really should be based in this year's books. There is this time period assumption where we can divide expenses and revenues to the right period so that we can have a complete picture of what happened during the period. And we want to make sure that we recognize and that we measure that transaction at the appropriate date for the appropriate amount. So this is key to ensure that the financial statements are uh, complete when it comes to the overall um, look of the financial statements. Now, SFAC 5 tells us that, uh, or addresses revenue, uh, sorry, addresses recognition, measurement, and disclosure concepts. So this is where we get this topic from, is a statement of financial accounting concept five. Now, note, accountants can't just say you must say, you must do it because I said so, they need to back it up with some standard, especially to clients. So when we say, how do we, when do we measure it? When do we recognize it? It's not that I'm saying we should do it now, it's that we're following SFAC 5, and this is what it's telling us about recognition, measurement, and disclosure. So when we talk about recognition, items should be recognized in the basic financial statement when it meets these four criteria, subject to cost-effectiveness constraints and materiality thresholds. So remember, we've got these cost-effective and materiality thresholds, and so as long as it's not outside those, then we need to follow these four criteria, and if we meet them, we can book it into our book. So the first one here is definition. The item meets the definition of an element of the financial statement, meaning the transaction or the element, we call it the element, So the because it's not really a transaction until it's in the books, but the element is not going to be entered into the books unless it meets the definition of an element for the financial statement. So, you know, if it's a, a contract between two employees uh, between themselves, well, that doesn't necessarily meet the definition of an element for the financial statement for this company. So we want to make sure that we it meets the element of a financial statement for um or meets the definition for this element in the financial statement. The second thing is measurability. So we can't book anything into the books unless we know what that amount needs to be in our journal entries. So in, we need to have some type of measurement, whether it is the contract states, this is what it's worth, or this is how much cash we receive, or this is the bill that we receive. Something has to tell us how much or the amount that we need to book into our journal entry. So the, the item has a relevant attributable measure, uh, attribute measurable with sufficient reliability. So we can actually rely on that number. Third, uh, third one here is relevance. The information about it is capable of making a difference in the user's decision. Now, this is kind of weird because this is basically saying if it doesn't make it, if it doesn't meet the definition of making a difference to the user, then you shouldn't have to report it. But us as accountants, we report everything. Where this really comes into play is when we actually report the financial statement. So, for instance, if um, 
I don't know, supplies was 500 bucks. Um, and the balance sheet uh, totals are $20 million. Nobody really cares about that $5, uh, $100 supplies, or I can't even remember now, but let's just say it's $5 supplies. Nobody cares about the $5 supplies, so we might dump that into other current assets and put that into other assets in the current asset section. So we'll combine it because um, it's not that relevant to the grand scheme of things. So in reality, we book everything that we need to, and then we'll synthesize it when we do the financial statements for the external users. And then lastly is reliability. The information is uh, representationally faithful, verifiable, and neutral. So can we rely on it? So did the sale manager just come up and say, hey, can you book uh, $100,000 of revenues because we, we sold something to a client? Or does that salesperson or that manager actually have a copy of the contract signed and the delivery of those or the shipment of those items to the customers. So what do we have? What type of evidence do we have and can we rely on it? Because we know why the salesperson is coming and telling us to inflate the revenues before the end of the year. So it makes them look better. But can we rely on that? That's what we want. So if they meet, if we meet four, all four of these criteria, then we can recognize it into our books. Now, when it comes to revenue recognition, revenues are infos of assets or settlements of liabilities resulting from providing a product or service to a customer. So we receive our revenue or we book our revenues when we've earned them. How do we earn them? We either deliver a product to the customer or we provide a service to the customer. Now, in financial accounting, we learned that revenue recognition occurs when the earning process is judged to be complete or virtually complete. There is a reasonable certainty as to the collectability of the assets to be received, usually in cash. Notice here this idea of reasonable certainty, meaning that you know, in financial accounting, we need to reasonably be certain that we would receive it. So if I were to sell this product to a customer, and there's a reasonable certainty that I'm not going to get any money, then I didn't really make a sale. I just gave them a product for free. If, however, I gave it to them and there is a reasonable certainty that they will pay me in a week, then I can book that as a sale. So understanding this reasonable certainty. Now, a revisement to all of this when it comes to SFAC 5. So due to the changes in SFC5 with the ASC 2014-09, companies, companies recognize revenue when goods or services are transferred to the customer for the amount the company expects to be entitled to receive in exchange for the goods or services. So again, referring back to we expect to receive this amount and we're entitled to this amount. That's how much we're gonna book into the books. Now, along with revenues, we've got expenses. So we take a look at the expense recognition. Expenses are outflows or uh, outflows or other using up of assets or uh, incurrences of liabilities for providing service goods or services. In financial accounting, you learn to book expenses as either product expense or period expense. Um, product expense are costs associated directly with a product that you attend to sell to a vendor or a end user. A period costs are not costs associated with directly with a product, but are required in order to operate during the period. So examples of that would be advertising and marketing expenses, the janitorial expenses, the headquarters offices, lease, all of those would be period expenses. We can't necessarily directly tie them to the product, uh, but they are necessary in order to operate our organization. Now in intermediate, how do we expand upon this? Well, in intermediate expense recognition is implemented by one of the four different approaches depending on the nature of specific expenses. So in principles, we kind of made it easy by saying, is it a period or is it a product expense? In intermediate, we've got four categories to expand upon. The first one being, it's based on an exact cost or a cost and effect relationship, thinking like sales and cost of goods sold, almost like a product cost. Uh, by associating an expense with the revenue recognized in a specific time period. So for instance, a salesperson expense, they get a commission that is based on the revenue being generated. So that we're tying to the revenue um, item. 
Uh, by a systematic and rational allocation to a specific time period. So depreciation, we're allocating the cost of the asset over its useful life. So that would be a systematic allocation of expenses. And then lastly, in the period without regard to related revenue. So advertising expense period cost. So this is kind of what we've been talking about since principles. And I would almost say this is what we've been talking about since principles. These ones were just dividing a little bit more narrower. And then this one, we've been doing this, but we're now signifying it here rather than in our period cost. It's still kind of a period cost, but there is this allocation that we don't necessarily do with these other period costs. So that is a look at recognition concepts. The idea here is when do we recognize any type of element into the financial statement. When we meet those four criteria, then we can put it into our financial statement. The two biggest one would be revenue type transactions and expense transactions. So hope you enjoyed this lesson and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching this lesson. If you enjoy what you saw, make sure you give it a thumbs up and don't forget to write something in the comment section below like, I don't know, what's your favorite superhero? If you are looking for the next intermediate accounting lesson, make sure you click on this button right over here. And if you wanna to head to my website and see all of the lessons that are available, make sure you head to my website right here. Until next time, we'll see you in the next video.